Welcome back, folks, to a brand new video. From alpine mountains and the glacial lakes, to even the sunny shorelines of the Riviera and Adriatic. The complete diversity of northern Italy is just as striking as the south. So I've already done the south of Italy video. So let's take a look at 10 beautiful places to visit in North Italy. Number one, Milan. So let's start this list with Milan, as you can fly there and base yourself from this city to visit some of the places on this list in the north of Italy. So the first monument to check out in this city is the Milan Cathedral, the Duomo di Milano. The symbol of the city is located in Piazza del Duomo. The historic center and the best starting point for a stay in Milan. It started in 1386. The construction of the cathedral took nearly 500 years. So it's such a sight to behold. You also have the Galleria. Constructed during the late 1800s, the Galleria is one of the oldest enclosed shopping malls in the world. And there's one amazing place that has some gelato, but you can check that out in the Milan video I've already made in the description below. So it's a great way to immerse yourself in the hustle and bustle of Milan as you walk around in the Galleria. So Milan is a solid good weekend off. And you can head straight to Lake Como, which brings me to the next one. Number two, Lake Como. Como is the lakeside village on the southern end of namesake Lake Como, around an hour's train ride from Milan. Far from the buzz of the city, Como is where you can take in the immersive beauty of the Alps, with elegant 19th century villas and majestic church buildings. But another one of my favourites is Bellagio. It's a small jewel of a town, and it's one of the most glamorous and romantic destinations in Lombardy. In fact, the well-known Pearl of Lake Como is home to a colourful historic centre. Beautiful gardens, charming neighbourhoods such as Pescalo, and its central location makes Bellagio really perfect in my opinion, especially for visiting other surrounding towns like Verena and Menagio, where you can easily arrive by boat. Number 3. Orta San Giulio The smallest of the Italian lakes, narrow Lago d'Orta, has a bucolic air and is far less touristy than Como and Maggiore. It's set on a little high point on the southeastern shore. The retro medieval town is an assembly of ancient stone buildings and plenty of cobbled lanes that's built around the lakeside. It's filled with pavement cafes, where you can relax and just take in the atmosphere. So there are plenty of lovely walks in the surrounding hills. So a visit to this mystical island of San Giulio is an absolute must. Number four, Lake Garda. The largest of the glacial lakes of the Lombardy province. Lake Garda is bordered by alpine peaks to the north and flat plains to the south. Gardens, orchards, forests all rim the shore, providing that scenic backdrop for those of you who are looking for rest and a bit of recreation. Now the southernmost town is Simeone, 
which features natural hot springs, a small castle, and the Grotto di Catullo, the largest collection of Roman ruins in northern Italy. So that's a good town to check out. And on the northern shore of the lake lies Riva del Gardo, which is the destination of choice for those of you that's interested in just the outdoor activities, including sailing or windsurfing or even kayaking. So you can see there's a contrast between the two, but very well worth a holiday trip, but very well worth to put on your list. Number five, Bergamo. A city in the Lombardy region of Italy, located in the far north of the country. Bergamo comprises of a walled historic center known as the Upper Town. It's steeped in medieval history, and so much so that some parts seem untouched since they were the first built. The 16th century Venetian defensive walls and gates were so impenetrable that the town was never conquered. So the highlights here are to visit the Piazza Vecchia and the upper city itself, La Citta Alta. It's perfect for walking around and checking out the town. And of course, don't miss out on visiting the Basilica di Santa Maria Maggiore. So overall, Bogomo is famous for its wealth of artistic treasures, very medieval town and atmosphere, and a real tale of two cities. Emilia Romagna. In a region as overwhelmingly foodie as Emilia Romagna, it's only natural that its capital, Bologna, is dubbed La Grassa, the fat one. This is the ultimate foodie destination, where you can organize a whole gourmet tour around artisan producers of, let's say, prosciutto, mortadella, and some intense balsamic vinegar, and Italy's king of cheeses, parmesan. But in between the eating and the drinking, you have the magnificent cities of Bologna, Parma, Ferrara, and Ravenna. Number seven, Genoa. Sometimes overshadowed by the popularity of other Italian cities like Rome and Venice. You think, why would I need to go to Genoa? Especially as an hour and 15 minutes away is Cinque Terre. But Genoa nevertheless is still one of Italy's true hidden gems. As the capital city of the Liguria region on the northwest coast of Italy, it's most associated as the birthplace of Christopher Columbus. But the city's shining crown is clearly its historic center, with narrow, winding streets that reveal surprising gems at every turn. So you really need to just walk around a very compact city because you can see a lot of things and get a lot of uh, attractions out of the way in a very short space of time. Give it a go. Number 8. Portofino A picture-perfect harbour, beautiful scenery and rows upon rows of hilltop and waterfront homes. Portofino is just one of those prettiest towns on the Italian Riviera, and it's only located just a short drive south of Genoa, which is why I said that you should base yourself in that city. The little village has been a very popular day trip destination for centuries. So it is a favourite stopping point for cruises that go along the Italian Riviera. There is a beautiful view of the lighthouse at Ponto Portofino which offers photographic views of the charming town. 
Choose the time that you visit wisely. I find that April, start of May, and right at the end of September are the perfect times to visit where it's still sunny and you still get to enjoy the town. Number 9. Verona An ancient city with a history stretching back to Roman times and it's best known as a setting for Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet. It's a very picturesque city, filled with Renaissance palaces, Roman ruins and medieval buildings. At the heart of the city lies the mini Roman amphitheatre. And as you walk around on the banks of the river Adige, you will find Castel Vecchio, which was built in 1354 or 55, which is a very impressive defensive fortress and you do get some stunning views. And there's another special place just a stone's throw away from Verona, 50 minutes by car, just off Lago di Garda, you will find the sanctuary of Madonna della Corona. means Our Lady of the Crown. Now being located between Milan and Venice, the city does receive a bit less attention compared to those two, so really really take advantage. Number 10. Tuyeste. Bordering the Adriatic and almost surrounded by Slovenia. For much of its history, Trieste was controlled by different powers and formerly ruled by the Habsburgs. It has a lot of different cultural influences. There's also a little bit of Vienna about its beautiful cafes. You see, the, the coffee bean folks is hugely important to Italy's coffee capital. There are plenty of beautiful Viennese style coffee houses. One you should check out is Cafe Tomasio. It's a very elegant spot for you just to sit back and relax and enjoy the atmosphere. And above the old town and next to the castle, the same name is San Justo, a hilltop cathedral, parts of which date back from the 6th century. So plenty of places to visit and I highly recommend you stay here for more than just a weekend. And there you have it folks, that was a taste of Northern Italy. So what do you prefer? South Italy or North Italy? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you all on the next one. As always, be good, be kind and be careful. Peace.